home to some of the tallest, largest, and oldest trees on earth, Northern California's Redwood Coast is a land shrouded in fog, rugged coastlines, and verdant rolling hills. Join the OTG crew as we tackle the 470 mile Redwood Coast Adventure Trail. We'll drive and hike through ancient Redwood Forest, dodge and Rolly Roosevelt elk herds, visit crystal clear rivers, and explore the rarely driven back roads of Del Norte, Humboldt, and Mendocino counties. This is the Redwood Coast Adventure Trail. going through there. I'll probably get a lot of shots through there and we'll bounce over to Fort Forks of Smith. Um, Allen Hill Road is the perfect way to begin your explorations along the Redwood Coast. The seven mile dirt road meanders through the old growth forest and is home to some of the tallest and largest trees on earth. This part of the forest is filled with ancient giants, many of which exceed 300 feet and a select few even exceed 350 feet. Just down Highway 101 in Redwood National Park sits Hyperion. At 380 feet tall, it's the tallest living tree on earth. With less than 5% of the original old growth redwood forest left, it's believed that some redwoods grew to taller than 400 feet. Known to the local indigenous people for thousands of years, the Grove of Titans features some of the largest coast redwoods on earth. Completed in 2022, the metal graded boardwalk trail helps protect the ancient tree's shallow root systems. While most redwood groves have many redwoods of varying sizes, the Grove of Titans has a small number of widely scattered ancient giants. New discoveries of giant trees are still happening today, but with the advent of the internet, big tree hunters have decided to keep their findings a secret. Reputed big tree hunters like Mario Vaden and Dr. Sillett of Cal Poly Humboldt now believe these trees can live up to 4,000 years old, and in fact, there are living redwoods that exceed the size of their record-setting cousins in the Sierra, the giant sequoia. This is also supported by verifiable historical records like the Crannell Creek Giant, which was up to 25% larger than the General Sherman tree. Just wrapping up the Grove of Titans hike, if you get a chance to come out here to either the Steelhead Adventure route or doing the Redwood Coast Adventure Trail like we're doing, you gotta check it out. It is absolutely spectacular. 
The one thing is they don't have those four largest trees marked. Now, I think I was able to identify them. What I'll do is I'll put some information down below in the video description and probably update the route guide on the website, overlandtrailguides.com, uh, to include that. So you can identify those, get some more information about them, but uh, they are some, uh, some massive redwoods for sure. Some of the biggest I've ever seen. And so we jumped in our rigs and finished up Howland Hill Road and headed for one of my favorite locations in the North State, which happened to be just a few miles down the road. Renowned for its crystal clear and turquoise colored water, the wild and scenic Smith River is one of the last remaining undammed rivers in California. It's said to be one of the cleanest rivers in the United States thanks to its relatively undisturbed watershed and limited development along its banks. Local indigenous tribes like the Yurok people have long-standing spiritual connections to the Smith thanks to its plentiful steelhead runs. The rugged beauty and clear waters of the Smith are second to none. And the short hike to the Forks of Smith is a spiritual rite of passage for anyone who visits the Redwood Coast. After visiting Forks of Smith, we climb higher into the mountains of the Smith River National Recreation Area. And if you've never visited the Smith, well, you're in for a treat. The red stained serpentine rocks and soils create quite the juxtaposition against the dark forest greens of pines and firs that shroud this rugged corner of the Klamath Mountains. We make a quick break for lunch, taking in the views of the Pacific and surrounding mountains. I didn't quite get the footage I was hoping for on this trip so I threw in a couple of drone clips from past visits to Ocean View Camp. We'd wrap things up in the Smith River NRA and jump on Highway 101 South, making a couple of stops along the way before hitting camp at Gold Bluffs Beach.
If you'd like to get more information about the 470 mile long Redwood Coast Adventure Trail, head on over to overlandtrailguides.com. There, you'll find over 90 curated overland routes across North America. Each route guide includes detailed information like discovery points, things to do and see, camping recommendations, best time to visit, vehicle recommendations, GPX files, and more. Why don't we get back to our adventure now? On the way to camp, we'd make a quick stop at Trees of Mystery for a photo op with Paul Bunyan and Babe the Blue Ox. Trees of Mystery also features an awesome sky bridge trail through the Redwoods, but unfortunately, we didn't have enough time to hike it that day. Next up, we'd be off to Coastal Drive. After burning several miles south going down Highway 101, the gravel road of Coastal Drive was a welcome retreat from the pavement. With only about three miles of the nine mile loop hugging the coastal cliffs, this little known gym delivers views of the rugged coastline and Klamath River mouth in spades. Keep an eye out for seals sunning on one of the river bars. And if you're lucky, you may just come across members of the local Yurok tribe spearfishing for salmon along the banks of the mighty Klamath River. From Coastal Drive, we'd continue through Prairie Creek Redwoods and on to camp at Gold Bluffs Beach. And as luck would have it, we came across one of the local elk herds on our way to camp. So we just arrived at one of my favorite places to camp along the Redwood Coast and that is Gold Bluffs Beach, named for the gold they used to find in the gravel up in the bluffs behind us. I'm gonna go see where everybody else is because we all kind of got spread out because each of these spots can only handle like one or two uh, vehicles. So grab my cerveza, go say what's up to everybody. Probably head down to the beach with Shasta too because I know she would like that. And so we enjoyed the relatively mild weather and headed towards the sound of the crashing waves. The views up and down the coastline from Gold Bluffs Beach are absolutely fantastic, but work still had to be done. So we begrudgingly headed back to camp to make dinner. We'd settle into camp with a toasty campfire and the crashing waves that would lull us to sleep that night. Gotta say, it is a beautiful day out here along the North State Coast, California, of course. And uh, I'm just lucky, but it looks like there might be some rain coming in. We'll deal with it. it doesn't look like anything too uh, too serious. And then we'll be uh, we'll be in Mendocino by that point, I think. So hopefully not as bad. I do love it up here, man favorite places in the world, bar none. 
Well guys, here is the inglorious part of overlanding and camping, and that is the cleanup. And sometimes it can be a lot, but you know, we gotta do it. But I always find it's easier if you have a little cerveza with you, so let's get into it. One of the other really nice things about Gold Bluff Beach over here is they have warm showers and they're free. So I'm gonna go hit that probably at the end of the night when everybody's in bed, uh, freshen up. That'll be really nice, but all right, let's get into it. Well, guess who is up first again? That would be Shasta and I. So I'm gonna take her for a little bit of a walk, then gonna get into the day. Speaking of the day, uh, I don't think we're doing Fern Canyon today. It looks like the road that way is closed, unfortunately. It is what it is. But we may still do a hike into the Redwoods, hike to a firehouse, uh, firehouse, um, fire lookout up on Schoolhouse Peak in Humboldt Redwoods and then uh, going through some of the, the Hoopa and Yurok tribal lands to cut across over to some BLM land. So should be a good one today. Let's get into it. I gotta say, it's pretty awesome to wake up to the surf and the waves crashing. Really do love Gold Bluffs Beach. If you get a chance to stay here, you absolutely should. Took a shower last night. Nothing like getting into your sleeping bag or bed when you're nice and clean, especially when you're on the trail like we are. So that was really nice. But why the Redwood Coast Adventure Trail or the Red Cat? So you can obviously come up to Northern California, visit a bunch of the, the state parks like Humboldt Redwoods, Jedediah Smith, Prairie Creek, go to the National Park, Redwood National Park. They actually, a lot of them kind of function as one, wood, uh, one unit, Redwood National and State Parks. But what you're gonna get with this particular Overland Trail, I'm gonna show you some of the best places to visit if you wanna get on foot and hike. Those are all pretty much discovery points or recommendations. And this is the big one, you're gonna go to places in the Smith River National Recreation Area that people that are coming up here to visit the Redwoods, they're not gonna go see. Um, you're gonna explore back roads that very few people get to experience and just experience the beauty of Del Norte, Humboldt, and Mendocino counties because it is spectacular out here and you need, you need to experience it. The nice thing is, you know, we're at the tail end of winter here can still get some storms but as you can see so far pretty nice supposed to be some rain coming in on Friday so that's gonna be interesting it is what it is uh, but it's not like you're dealing with snow or stuff like that so if you can catch a break in the weather you can absolutely go up here in winter time and stuff like that but today's gonna be a lot of fun so I'm gonna enjoy myself With blue skies above us, we hit the trail excited for what lay in store for the day. The first order of business would be tracking down one of the local elk herds, which turned out to be easier than expected as one of the herds was congregating at the nearby elk meadow.
California is the only state that is home to all three species of elk. And here, along the densely forested north coast, the Roosevelt elk thrive and are commonly spotted throughout Prairie Creek Redwoods and Redwood National Park. The largest of the three elk species, Roosevelt bull elk can reach 1,100 pounds. Just keep in mind, bulls do become aggressive during the mating season, also known as the rut, that takes place from late August to mid-October. Elk Meadow and Elk Prairie, which is just down the road, are popular locations for elk viewing. Just remember to give these impressive animals plenty of space. All right, so we are walking to Big Tree, one of the discovery points on the Redwood Coast Adventure Trail. It's my first time checking it out, but I've been told it's pretty awesome. I love seeing being redwood trees, so let's go check it out. These majestic giants have a way of reminding us just how inconsequential we are. Some of these trees have been in existence since the rise of the Greek Empire, but a rapidly warming planet threatens their very existence. It should be a warning sign to all of us that we've got to do better if we want to preserve these special places for posterity. After visiting Big Tree, we began climbing Bald Hills Road on our way to Schoolhouse Peak. But first, we'd make a quick stop at Redwood Creek Overlook. From the viewpoint, one can see out to the Pacific and into the Redwood Creek Basin where the impacts of logging can be witnessed firsthand. Bald Hills is a land of sweeping vistas, diverse wildlife, and a rich cultural tapestry woven through time. Since time immemorial, local indigenous people understood the delicate balance of this ecosystem. They practiced a technique called good fire during the fall months. These controlled fires carefully managed the landscape, keeping the prairies open and healthy. This traditional practice not only created these breathtaking views, but also ensured biodiversity and a thriving habitat for countless species. Today, the National Park Service partners with tribes like the Karuk to continue the ancient tradition of good fire.
As we climbed higher into the Hoopa tribal lands, we began to encounter the occasional deadfall. But then it was more, and more, and more deadfall, and with only a few more miles left to camp, our pace began to dramatically slow as the sun sunk closer to the horizon. More deadfall as you can see, this is the biggest one so far. Looks like about a foot and a half in diameter. And so the crew got to work. I've gotta admit, we thought we'd be able to make easy work of the tree in about 10 or so minutes, but it turned out to be a stubborn son of a gun. We made multiple attempts with the winch, but with the downward angle of the fallen tree, the winch line started to pull the tree into the ground. So it was time to pull out the chainsaw and cut the tree into smaller chunks. For someone like myself with amateur chainsaw skills, this turned out to be quite a bit more precarious than the video would have you believe. Finally, we made it through, but we had another surprise waiting for us just around the corner. Let go! Finally got it. All right. Took a while. A couple winch attempts, multiple cuts. We got it. And as luck would have it, we started to hit the snow. The snow drifts began to get deeper and deeper, and then I ended up getting stuck and nearly slid off the trail. Adam was able to winch me back towards the center of the trail, and once I aired down, I had plenty of traction, but the snow only got deeper further up the mountain. Short on daylight, but only a couple of miles to camp, the group decided we should abandon our plan to push on through, and instead take an alternate route up and over the summit. So here's the thing guys, nothing wrong with turning around, especially if you can detour. Like, we could try to push through that, but a couple people in the group, um, they didn't want to keep working, and I get it. It's tiring to do this stuff. We're running a little bit low on daylight, so made it an executive decision, and we were just going to backtrack, um, drop down to the highway, and then go over this other dirt road that's a lot more, uh, more well-traveled. We shouldn't have issues with deadfall. And uh, if we have snow, it should be minimal. It doesn't go as high as this particular road. So it is what it is. Let's get on the road. We quickly backtracked down the road and dropped into Hoopa, only to be treated with the swelling waters of the Trinity River. From there, we take the well-traveled dirt along Bear Road up and over the summit. Luckily, the road had been plowed recently as we encountered a significant amount of snow as we climbed towards the pass. Morning from Lax Creek. Last night, wind started howling around four o'clock. We knew the rain was gonna come in. Sometime around five o'clock, the rain picked up. Went from a light rain to a moderate rain. Light rain right now. We're gonna try to get off the mountain and get on our way though. All right, let's do it.
So we're up in the Neyland area right now. It is absolutely beautiful out here, especially since it's like the first or second day of spring. Everything is super green. Lots of old man's beard moss up on the oak trees that haven't uh, grown their leaves yet. But uh, yeah, it's pretty awesome. After five hours of solid rain and being confined to our rigs, I propose that we head into town for a bite to eat. Let's just say nobody in the group objected to the idea. After a much needed lunch stop at Eel River Brewing, it was off to Bear River Ridge and Matoll Road along the northernmost section of the Lost Coast. The verdant rolling hills of Bear River Ridge had us feeling like we were climbing the stairway to heaven. The caravan meandered ever closer to the coast through the ferociously howling wind. Leaving the dirt and gravel of Bear River Ridge behind us, we jumped onto the pockmarked pavement of Matoll Road. And while many of us relish the portions of our trips on dirt roads and trails, don't let that dissuade you from driving one of the most awe-inspiring stretches of coastline in the lower 48. Due to the inclement weather, 
we decided to head straight for camp along the Matol River. We hoped we'd be able to find some respite from the weather upon arriving at AWA County Park. But when you're in one of the wettest locations in the state, the rain never seems to stop for too long. Nestled in the heart of the lush Matol River Valley lies one of my favorite campgrounds in the North State, AWA County Park. During the rainy season, the Matol swells with cloudy water, but over summer and fall, its waters turn a brilliant turquoise green, much like the Smith River to the north. We took full advantage of the break in the rain to explore the banks of the Matol and even spotted a seasonal waterfall high up on the mountain. We turned into camp earlier than expected, wondering if the rains would spill into the next day. Another rainy morning here near Honeydew and Humboldt. I'm gonna try to put the stuff away. All right guys, we just left AWA County Park outside of Honeydew in Humboldt County. It is forecasted to rain all day. As you can see, it's been raining this morning, just picked up a little bit now. So I'm still going out, but some of the other guys decided to go home. I gotta get the camera shots. I think we're gonna do a uh, hike under the Redwoods in Bull Creek Flat. And then we're gonna be driving the, uh, the absolutely beautiful back roads of Southern Humboldt, Northern Mendocino County and then uh, finishing off at the Mendo Coast. We made our way out of the exquisitely serene Matol River Valley, up and over the mountain, down into Humboldt Redwoods. You've probably heard of Avenue of the Giants, but in my humble opinion, the stretch of Matoll Road that goes through Bull Creek Flats is much more impressive. Right here, in this forest, is the largest remaining contiguous old growth redwood forest left on Earth.
All right, guys, we're at Bull Creek Flat Redwoods in Humboldt Redwood State Park. This particular forest here has one of the largest uh, old growth redwood forests on earth, and it is the densest known biomass uh, on earth as well. Not only that, it has the highest concentration of redwoods over 350 feet tall. Many of the tallest redwoods or the tallest trees on earth actually live right here within a couple miles that way and a couple miles that way. It is absolutely sublime. This is one of my favorite places to hike when I'm up on the Redwood Coast. Check it out if you get the chance. Before leaving Humboldt Redwoods, we made a quick stop down at the Eel River and the old Dyerville train truss. In the warm season, Dyerville Bar is a fantastic place to sunbathe and swim in the cool waters of the Eel. Then we were off to take on the final leg of the route, exploring the back roads of Southern Humboldt and Northern Mendocino counties. This was my first time exploring some of these roads, so I was rather excited what lay around the bend, and the Redwood Coast Adventure Trail wouldn't disappoint. on Bell Springs Road, one of the discovery points on the Redwood Coast Adventure Trail. It is absolutely spectacular out here. These dirt county roads in Humboldt and we'll be in northern Mendocino County soon. Oh my god, I feel like I'm in a movie like Lord of the Rings or something like that. So we don't have the Redwoods around here, but the, what you, that lacks, it makes up in scenery and spades. And so we continued on the dirt roads, finally reaching northern Mendocino County. We even managed to hit a bit of local traffic along the way. This area used to be the heart of Northern California's once burgeoning marijuana industry, but with the cannabis market in free fall, the land is slowly being returned to ranchers and back to landers. So 
we just dropped off Tony in Laytonville. He's got to go back to Reno. Um, but Shasta and I are going to go out to the coast, finish this thing off, get to the town of Mendocino, have a nice dinner. Got to find camp though. Let's make it happen. Take care, Take care Tony. Alright guys, I'm rolling solo, uh, made a little bit of a detour here, decided to hit uh, skip Sherwood Road just because it was pouring today and I know that road gets very muddy. So I made a detour over to Highway 20 and we are cutting through uh, some of the county dirt roads and dirt roads here in Jackson Demonstration Forest and we'll pop out in Mendocino, finish things up at Big River Beach, almost there, let's get it done. After two days of consecutive rain and nearly 500 miles on the trail, a sense of pride and accomplishment came over me as we drove through the quaint village of Mendocino. We'd taken the views and then crossed the highway to finish things off at Big River Beach. Well guys, we made it. That's a wrap. This is the final discovery point on the Redwood Coast Adventure Trail. This is Big River, Big River Beach. I think Shasta and I are gonna have some fun. We'll see you next time. Don't forget to subscribe. Godspeed and safe trails. Come on Shasta.